All right, this is part two of flow charting the Fabazon part two problem. And the first time we went through, I had this all set up and we tested it without any decisions. Then we added this decision and this decision and this markup rate. And then we tested going from here, loading up on the high markup rate, then choosing that rate here, and then we saw that it came out right. Then we did this decision using the low markup rate. And again, it came down here, went down this way, went into here, down here, then down here, and then went off. And then we did the final one. So we need to get the next two zip codes. And that makes this pretty easy because what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it over here. And because of the way I've done the naming, this is going to be pretty easy because um, the next zip code is, well, let me fix this because this is not right. All right, so copy that. <clears throat> All right, and then this should be that. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is this one. So I'm just going to copy this zip code. And actually, the, since I've copied and pasted all the way down, I don't have to do much except replace everything that says 101004 with 10112. All right, and then I'll click OK. And I'll come in here and I'll replace this. And then I'll come in here and replace this. come in here and replace this so it saves me a little be by you consistently naming my objects it makes it a lot faster now normally I would I would test this three times but I'm not I'm only gonna check ch test it once with the low because whoops what the heck was that okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and play it unknown great pro oh Oh no, what's going on? Okay, let's... Alright, I had some technical difficulty because I had removed the USB drive. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and play it. And the initial cost is going to be 100. So that's going to be low. And then this time I'm going to do 10112. And the item cost is going to be $100, so 3.5, that's correct. And then add 100 to it to 450, so that's correct. So we can see that that's working perfect. So now we just simply move over. I copy this. I paste it here. And then for here, I'm going to have to use 33109. And again, since I consistently named my objects or my variables, I simply have to paste this into here and then replace those numbers one for all three places. And although I should test it three times each time I do this, I don't really have to because I know that everything is going to work out perfect. But I certainly wouldn't turn it into my boss that way. All right, so we're going to test it with the low value again. Um, the low value is... Two. So let's go ahead and run this again. So it'll be $100 for the low. It'll be 33109. And 100, and then markup is 2, so that works. And the final price is 3. So everything's working perfectly. But we're not done yet. And that's because we have an issue. And that is, what if a person types in the wrong thing? So if he comes in here and I type in 11111, whoops, 100, and then here I just do 111111, 
you can see the item costs 100, markup is zero, price is zero. We don't want that to happen. We want to say, hey, an error has occurred. So we're going to place this right here, an output. And that output is going to say, you typed, and then we're going to join that with zip code. So we can display what zip code they typed in. And then we're going to say, I'm going to join that with quote space. You needed to type. And then let me go get the options that we have. Yeah, might as well come copy from here. All right. So, uh, one, 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 oh, four. One zero one one two and three three one oh nine. Not sure about this one. Is that right? Let's go back and let me check to make sure. Yeah, ten one oh four. Oh no, that's 10. It is not correct. 10 101 04. All right, so I should have made sure that it was the right one. And I need to close that with a quote. All right, so now I have that. So now if someone types in um, 100 and 111111, it says you typed in that, but you should have typed in these. But it doesn't mitigate the damage that's done because it still gives me that same output. So down here, I'm going to put in an assignment, and that assignment is going to set the error flag. So error flag, and I'm going to make the error flag equal to one, uh, one being true, so the error flag is flying, and by default it's zero. So the next thing I have to do is come over here and change the way my program runs. So when I get down to here, this is where I want to see if the error flag is flying. So I'm going to put an if condition here. And I'm going to say error flag, I should be copying and pasting, uh, equals 1, no, equals 0. So what we want to do is first see, well, error flag equals 0 means no error has occurred. If that is true, then I'm going to do the rest of my program. So let's see if I can get this done. I'm going to probably have to move this thing out a little bit so I can get everything. All right, so I'm going to copy everything from here down. It won't let me do that. All right, so let me. There we go. Okay, so I've I've selected everything. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, my mouse is not working. Okay, so I'm going to do Control X. That gets rid of it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it in. So if no error has occurred, then we'll do the whole rest of the program out here. But if an error does occur, meaning error, error flag equals 1, then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that error in it again. So let me go ahead. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. Seems kind of silly that we're putting in two. Shot my mouse. Come on. And I'm going to paste it in here. Whoa. Okay. No. Okay, 
didn't copy and paste right. Sometimes I hate Visual Basic. It's a, I mean, a Visual Logic. It's a pain in the neck. Okay, so copy. Please copy. I did Control C and it didn't take. And then over here with the error flag, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Hopefully this time. There we go. It may seem simple having the same thing, but this in our code is going to be a document right. And the other one up here is going to be a um, is going to be an alert. So they're actually going to be two different part base, pieces of code. This one here is going to be document right, and that's going to be an alert. All right. So um, the other the last thing we want to do is some efficiencies, and we can see. You can't see. Okay, so. We're bringing in. Oh, come on. All right. So here we have item cost and zip code. We're using zip code here, but we're really not using the item cost until we get down to here. So really, this shouldn't be here. We're going to cut this out, and we're going to place it right here. And the reason I want to do that is I don't want to ask them the item price if they've typed in the zip code incorrectly. So let's go ahead and let's run it again. All right, so if I do uh, 111111, I made a mistake. I made a mistake, and then it goes out. So it's done. So that's good. So they didn't ask me a question. But if I do um, 10... 104. Now it asks me the cost of the item, and I say 100, and now it runs perfectly. So just a little bit of thing. We don't want to ask a person to pipe in a price, then type in a zip code, and tell them, oh, the zip code is wrong. It's going to ask you, then why did you make me type in the price? All right, that's the end of this one. That's the end of our solution.